And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hi, welcome to the Dice Tower. Woo! I'm Melody, and this is my dad. Today we're taking a look at Via Appia, which is Latin for the Appian Way, which was a very famous road that they built, and this game is all about building that road. Now, when I first heard about building this road, that didn't really catch my attention very much. Okay, building a road, is that fun for a game? But when I saw the main mechanic for this game, I said, oh! I wanted to play it so very much because of that one mechanic. Now, is one mechanism enough to make a good game? Let's take a look and we'll be back. All right, here's the board, which shows the road that goes from Rome to these three other cities, and players are going to be building that, that city together. Now, players will start with a shield that they'll build from these pieces here, and you'll keep your coins behind that shield because you'll be collecting coins as the game progresses, and any stones that you'll get, and players will start with stones, there's three different sizes of stones here, will be kept in front so everyone can see those. On your turn, a player has four different actions that they can take. Over on the side of the board are several income cards. They can take one of these income cards and they can either take the amount of money at the top and put it behind their screen or they can take the stone or stones at the bottom and put them in front of their screen. Once they've done that, they'll turn it over. When there's only three of those cards left, then when a player takes it, they will get both things on the thing. And when there's only one of them left, a player will also get a bonus push token. When all seven of them are turned over, then you'll deal out seven new ones and it just keeps going on forever and ever and ever. Now, that's one thing a player can do. Another thing a player can do is the most fun thing in the game, that's crush stones. And for that, we use this. Now, the way this works here is you'll notice that there's little stones here. On your turn, in, for your action, if you have stones in front of your shield, let's say I have two of these medium white stones, you can place them here and crush stones. I place them here and I take this and I push. Now you don't hit it, it's not hockey and you have to make it clear to people when they're playing, it's not just a shove. And you just push and what you're doing is you're trying to make things fall off the end. You'll note that this is very similar to those games at Chuck E. Cheese and other arcade style games. And see, I came pretty close and didn't knock one over. Obviously, if you have a bigger stone, you'll be able to knock over a whole lot more. When these stones fall off the end, for each stone that you knock off, you can take a coin or you can take one of these paved stones here. You're crushing them. If you knock off a large one, you can take any size you want. If you knock off a white stone, you can take the medium or the small stone. And if you knock off a small one, you can take a small stone. When you take those stones, you'll put them in a wagon that you have, which has spots to put the different stones in. If you don't have spots, you can't take those stones. So that's the second action players can take. A third action that players can take is by building on the road here. If a player has stones in their cart, they can place them as long as they can trace a line from the stones back to, you'll notice that there's, let's focus up here, there's little lines pointing back to the city where their guy is. Each player is a, a guy in the city. So I can build, as long as my, when my guy's in Rome, I can build stones in this area. If I want to build stones in the next area, I would have to move my guy up to the next city. Now, when you build stones, you have to build them in order. So I could build any of these first three. Now that this one's built, I can build this one here. So I could build this stone or this stone or this stone next. When you build stones, you will get points five, three, and one. And you will also take a token matching the section you're in. This is section A over here. This is section B because at the end of the game, you, there's points, eight points for the person who's built the most stones in each section. Another thing that players can do on their turn is they can pay money to move onto stones. The big stones can hold two, the rest of the stones can hold one. It costs one coin to move one, two, three coins to move two, and six coins to move three. The first person who gets to a city, and of course the stones would have to be built to be able to get you all the way there, will take a bonus chip that's worth six points. The second person gets three, the third person gets one. Once someone reaches a city, we also will add a little orange disc here to show that everybody else who's going to that city now has is minus one coin for all their movements. So that the and then when another person gets there, it will be minus two. So if you fall behind, it will be cheaper for you to move to catch up. 
The game will end when either one person gets all the way here to the last city or when every stone area on the board is filled up. At that point, you will show these off behind your screen and get bonus points for those. Add those to the points that you got during the course of the game from being the first to city or from building stones themselves. And whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. All right, well, first let's talk about that mechanic because I was doing that just to do it sometimes. <laughs> you know, to push things off. Yeah, I always tell my kids, don't play those games when we go to Chuck E. Cheese and the yeah, other places. Waste the coins. Yeah, you put a coin in there. Does it, do the coins ever fall off? Sometimes. Sometimes, but it seems like you put more in the than fall off. Here, it's, it's very even. You, sometimes, when you play this game, you'll put the stones on and you'll push and you're sure one will come off. It doesn't. And it doesn't. Ha, 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 sucker. Okay, that's not, it's not, it doesn't matter who it is. It mostly happened to you. Okay, again, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Um, but knocking them off to get money and then using that money to, or, or, or to get the stones and then using the stones, it's a really simple game. It's not complicated at all. We played it with Melody, but we also played it with Amy and Holly too, and they were able to pick it up and understand it. This is a game that I thought should be up for the spiel that's yours because this is the kind of game that's very simple, very easy, fun to play. Um, I, um, go, what do you think? Um, I thought it was fun. I like that one part where you push the stones, try to drop it off. That's the best part of the game, and if that wasn't in the game, it might not be as good. I also thought it was fun how you try to put the pieces in. I also liked the cart where you could either put one big piece or one small and medium piece in that one spot. Um, my sisters always hoarded them, and they really didn't put them out as much. <laughs> they more like the pushing things instead. Right, there's there's different ways to get points in this game. There's really three three I mean two ways to build those paths or to move your guy on the paths. And building the paths you have to do, but how do you go about doing it? Do you take your incoming, build up a big pile of stones and then use those stones to knock off as many pieces? Or do you move your person as fast as you can? Even picking which income thing you want, do you want one with good better stones or one with more money? Um I, I this is not a game that we can keep talking and talking about because it really is just that simple. It's a few mechanics to build it, but I think it plays very smoothly. And I think people get a big kick out of knocking the stones down and building it. And it's a very simple, easy going game that the whole family can play. So I give this one a very good rating. I very much enjoy it. It's not complex. I doubt people will be writing any strategy articles for this, but it does allow some tactical play and some funny moments when you see the stones fall or not. The art Artwork was good too. I like the different cities and how the stones um, looked very nice and actually looked like a road. Yeah, and, and yeah, the compete the pieces were very well done. Maybe if there was one problem with that it only goes to four players, it'd probably be nice if it went up to six somehow or even it five. Faster. And yeah, that's probably true though. It, it probably just goes at the right speed. So you're giving this a thumbs up? Yes. Yes, uh, me too. We are Apia. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.